Ooh, and welcome back once again to Jeffinigan's Wake. I'm sorry, Infinite Jeff. I just did Jeffinigan's Wake. This is Infinite Jeff, the project where I, Jeff, read the book Infinite Jest to you one page at a time, one day at a time, put it up on the YouTube.com for everyone to listen to. <sighs> this is dive right into this. Trying to do four today. This is number one. <clears throat> so, page 274. Let us go. Boiler Room Bunko Man, and now a cellular phone retailer who'd hooked up with the house under the original founder, guy that didn't even use his first name, and had about ten years clean, Gene M. did. Eugenio lovingly confronted Gately early on about his special burglar's selective attention, and how it could be dangerous, because how can you be sure it's not it's you doing the screening and not the spider? Gene called the disease the spider, and talked about feeding the spider versus starving the spider, and so on and so forth. Eugenio M. had called Gately into the house manager's back office and said what if Don's screening input turned out to be feeding the old spider, and what about an experimental unscreening of input for a while? Gately said he'd <clears throat> do his best to try and and had come back out and tried to watch a spont dyson of the Celtics, <clears throat> excuse me, while two resident pillow biters from the Fenway were having this involved conversation about how some third fag having to go in and get the skeleton out of some kind of fucking rodent removed from inside their butthole. Note 91. The unscreening experiment had lasted half an hour. This was right before Gately got his 90-day chip and wasn't exactly real tight or real tolerant still. Ennett House this year is nothing like the freak show it was when Gately went through. Ms. Charlotte Treat, with a carefully made up face, or carefully made up ruined face, is watching the viewer's stripe shot cartridge while she needlepoints something. Conversation between her and Jeffrey D. was mercifully petered out. Day is scanning the room for somebody to, else to engage and piss off so he can prove to himself that he doesn't fit in here and stay separated off, isolated inside himself, and maybe get them so pissed off there's a beef and he gets bounced out. Day. And it won't be his fault. You can almost hear his disease chewing away inside his head, feeding. Emil Minty, Randy Lenz, and Bruce Green are also in the room, sprawled off in spring-shot chairs, lighting one gasper off in the end of the last. Their postures, the don't-fuck-with-me slouch of the streets, that here makes their body's texture somehow hard to distinguish from that of the chairs. Neil Gunther, <clears throat> Nell Gunther, is sitting at the long table in the doorless dining room that opens right out of the old DEC fold-out T.P.'s pine stand, whitening under her nails with a manicure pencil amid the remains of something she's eaten that involves serious syrup. Bert F. Smith is also in there, weighed down by himself at table's end, trying to sigh, saw at a waffle with a knife and fork attached to the stumps of his wrists with Velcro, Velcro bands. A longtime former DMV driver's license examiner, Bruce F. Smith is 45 and looks 70, has almost all white hair that's waxy and yellow from close order smoke, and finally got into Ennett House last month after nine months stuck in the Cambridge City Shelter. Bert F. Smith's story is he's making like his 50th odd stab at sobriety in, double, in AA. Once devoutly RC, Bert F. S. has potentially lethal trouble with faith in a loving God ever since the RC Church apparently granted his wife an annulment in like B.S. All right, that was page number 274 on 